Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Amen. God is good, right? Serve an awesome God. No better place to be than the house of God tonight in Bastrop, Texas. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, if the musicians would come, uh, all the singers we've got for tonight. Uh, as y'all can see, uh, Pastor Chandler and Sister Chandler are not here tonight. And there is a saying that says, when the pastor's away, the saints will play. But I would like us to flip that. And instead of playing, why don't we praise the one and only true God to the best of our ability, no matter what's gone on in our week, no matter how bad it's been, no matter what has come against us. Let's praise Jesus tonight with all of our hearts, minds, and souls. Amen? Amen. I'm going to start, uh, while they're getting ready, uh, with Psalm 34. I will extol or exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. If you are afflicted tonight, hear what I say and let's rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we all stand and let's praise the Lord tonight.
can't do anything without you. Lord, I can't do anything without you, Lord. We need you. We want you. We need you. We need you, Lord.
give a hand clap of praise to our Lord and Savior. Yes, He's good. He's good. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. Amen. Uh, Y'all may return back to your seats if you'd like. (coughs) Nothing like the sweet presence of the Lord. He is the healer. He is the comforter. He is my everything. And I will worship him and praise him till the day I die. And then I will praise and worship him every day from from then forward in eternity. And I expect to see all of y'all's faces there. Praising with me. Amen. Amen. Uh, Keep Pastor Chandler and Sister Chandler in your prayers. Um, Yes. She did. come in prayer for this. Why don't we do that right now? I believe God can heal her right now. No more pain, no more suffering for Sister Chandler. Let's pray for her right now. God, we lift up Sister Chandler before you right now. Here and now, Lord, you said by your stripes we are healed, God, and we're believing. We are believing in faith, God, that you will heal her right now. Lord, we... We exhort you, God, to hear our cries, Lord, for Sister Chandler. God, we love her so much, Lord. We want that pain to go away, God. We want all the surgeries to be done with, God. Put her back into perfect health, God. Let her sing praises unto you, God, in perfect health. And the people said, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, she is healed. We believe it, God. We have faith in your healing power. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep them in prayer. Keep them in prayer. I'm going to ask Sister Missy to come forward and uh, give us the announcements. Y'all can be seated for a minute. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm here in Heatherstead tonight just to give you some uh, announcements and the things coming up this week. <clears throat> so, Tomorrow and Friday is our, um, our all-church fast. So tonight, beginning at midnight, we will start fasting. We'll fast through tomorrow and through Friday. And we will break our fast after our prayer meeting on Friday. So tomorrow night, we will have prayer here at the church at 7. And then Friday night, we will have prayer here at the church at 7 as well. Um, on Friday. Friday night also, there's a youth camp out at Brother John's place at 7 o'clock. Is that still on? Weather permitting. We've been having lots of rain lately, so depending on the weather. Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, the men will meet at Dunkin' Donuts for a fellowship. I believe this is an every Saturday thing, so if you can come and fellowship with the guys, you're more than welcome. Guys, fellowship with the guys. (laughs) And Saturday um, afternoon at 4 o'clock is outreach. Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Singles? No? Okay. We're moving the singles game night to this Friday night uh, at Sister Amber's house. Okay. Uh, Sunday at 8.15, praise practice. 9 o'clock prayer. 10 o'clock Sunday school. 11 o'clock worship. Also on Sunday, the youth are having a spaghetti cook-off fundraiser. Uh, They're raising money for everybody to go to NAYC, which is a huge trip. It's out of state, costs lots of money to send everybody. So please come prepared to participate in that fundraiser. Um, 
Now, also on Sunday, immediately after church, the VBS meeting will happen. And anybody who is wanting to help with VBS, lead up VBS, participate in any of the stations, you need to meet Sunday after church with Sister LaShan. <coughs> on Monday, Memorial Day, there will be a lunch and play time at Sister Amber's house at 12 o'clock for any families, anybody who has kids that just wants to hang out and play, all are welcome. Saturday, May 30th at 9 a.m. is a men's work day. There's lots of work that needs to be done around the church, so please make plans to attend if at all possible. All singles, please meet with Sister Amber immediately after service today. Don't forget our revival is coming up on June 13th and 14th with Brother Gordon Poe. Let's invite our friends, our families, our neighbors, anybody you come in contact with, invite them. This proves to be a powerful event. Also, the youth leaders need to meet with any, all of the parents, the children, and young adults who are planning on going to NAYC tonight after church. Um, Sunday uh, for church, say spaghetti. 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 Need everybody to make some spaghetti, um, preferably with meatballs. And we are going to have a contest. We're going to have a spaghetti cook-off contest on Sunday, and it will benefit and help out our youths. Okay? And there will be a contest. There will be a, a panel of judges. So uh, bribes are welcome. I'm one of the judges, so tell me which one's the best. And uh, No, I'm just kidding. But if you could make some spaghetti um, so that we can all have some, there'll be different flavors, different kinds. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, how much is it? It's just total donations. So um, with that said, how many of you plan on fasting for the Thursday and Friday fast? How many of you are happy about it? Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> If y'all will allow me to, real quick, let me just um, say this about fasting. Fasting is one of the most horrible things I've ever done. Um, it really is. It's, it's very hard. I have trouble with it. I struggle with it because my flesh fights me at every nook and cranny. I can come up with 100 excuses. I can't do it at work. I can't do it because I got to drive. You know, I don't want to get in a wreck. Whatever. <laughs> do we have a God that can overcome that. Any excuse we can come up with, our God is bigger, correct? We must have faith in that God. So we need to fast and put away our flesh. And I'm reminded of the song that me and my beautiful daughter did a few uh, months back called Encounter Me. Fasting is what you do when you want to encounter your Creator. It puts aside all the mud and the muck of this world, all your cares and worries of this world, and it puts your mind and your heart on Him. Him alone. And you weep and you cry and you say, God, I'm hungry. And He says, I'm going to feed you. He's going to feed us with the Word. He's going to feed us with overcoming iniquities, overcoming sickness. He is a healer. And fasting is one of the greatest things that you can do in the kingdom. And that's why I think it's one of the hardest things to do in the kingdom. So I encourage everybody to join with us for these two days of fasting and prayer. Um, I, I see miracle signs and wonders following, especially if the whole church will join together in unity and do this. Amen. Um, next, we're going to... Um, give to the Lord. So if y'all don't mind standing one more time. I just finished a book by Randy Alcorn called Money, Possessions, and Eternity. It's over 400 pages filled with everything you could ever want to know about money, possessions, and eternity. And the, on the last chapter when he's concluding with it, he says this. He says, our country is one of the most blessed countries in the world ever. Ever. Not just now but ever in the history of the world. We have more money per family, more 
more people are rich according to the world standards in our country than ever before. Now, did God do that in order that we would have more toys and more vacations? Or did he do it because he wanted to see his kingdom fulfilled here on earth? And he wanted to see poverty go away. No more poverty. No more people living on the streets. No more people having to struggle. You have to ask yourself that. Is it more important to give to the kingdom now than when you pass from this life? Those are questions we need to be asking ourselves. When you're gone, you have to give it because you're not here no more. It's not yours. But if you give it now, while you're still alive and breathing, and you have that choice to give it to the kingdom instead of to something, whatever, it could be anything. How much more will your treasures in heaven be? Does that make sense? So I encourage you, give to what you love. If you love the kingdom of God, then give to the kingdom of God. If you love the things of, of God, give to them. And he will give you back. Not necessarily finances, but blessings. You may not get sick the rest of your life. Uh, your kids may never get sick. Who knows? God is a good God. He can work in awesome and great ways. All right? So let's pray over the offering. Jesus, we come to you tonight, Lord, and we ask you to give us a heart of giving. Lord, we are selfish beings without you. And we know that if you will put a spirit of giving into our hearts, Lord, we will have more joy. We will have more peace. This world will be a better place. And this city can be reached. The lost of this city, Lord, can be reached if we will just give of our time, of our money, of our everything, Lord, to you. And you will bless us abundantly, overflowing, all that good stuff. So God, I ask you to bless the congregation tonight. I ask you to bless those who give, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Y'all may come and give. Um, while everybody's giving, uh, Sister Nancy, if you'll come up here, she's going to stand in uh, for her sister in prayer. If some of the ladies of the church would like to come behind her, uh, we're going to anoint her with oil, and we're going to believe that God is going to heal that situation, Lord. Okay. She's having surgery on Friday. elaborate on the little Monday thing at my house. Uh, anyone that wants to come is welcome, but if you can let me know by Sunday so that I can make sure, because uh, I'll provide the watermelons, and a few others have offered to bring uh, sandwiches and chips, uh, and I'll provide the Kool-Aid as well. Monday's Memorial Day, and we have planned a church uh, outing to go to the zoo. Been ordered to, for more, because the whole the whole purpose in having that was so that we could be together and families could spend time and the kids could play. Uh, since a lot of people were not able to do that, I've opened up my home just to, for y'all to come over. Uh, I have a fenced-in yard. It's not huge, but it, I love it. I love my house. It starts at 12, and we'll go to maybe 3 or 4. Um, and if you have any outside, outside uh, toys that you want to bring, lawn chairs, We'll just, I'm the kind of person, I'm very spontaneous, so whatever goes, we'll just have fun. Uh, I've been known to put polyurethane on the ground and squirt it with water, and we can slide on it <laughs> when I was a kid, okay? So, I mean, so, you know, we'll just have a good time. Uh, just let me know by Sunday so that I can make sure that I have enough uh, watermelon, and then whatever you bring, we'll kind of share and just have fun, and uh, just bring your lawn chair, because I'm not, I'm not going to put a lot of work into it, honestly. This is a kind of relaxing day. But I don't want it, you know, we're not going to have tables. I do have a few small uh, picnic tables for the kids. So it's just come and just relax in the backyard. It's very shaded. So we'll just have a good time.
All right. I'm going to introduce my brother. Uh, he's going to be a senior at Texas Bible College starting next fall. Uh, some, some of you have known him a lot longer than I have, but for the last six years that I have known him, I have seen one of the most, I don't want to say like incredible transformations, but uh, just the difference in him. Um, he's always been the same person, you know, always loving and caring and, and happy-go-lucky, you know. Uh, he had a little bit more hair when I met him. Um, but he's just a great man of God. And, uh, and, and that day that he came to this altar and received the gift of the Holy Ghost, it really changed him. I mean, he, he is a perfect example of what the Holy Ghost can do in somebody's life. And so he's here tonight with us. He's going to preach the Word of God to us. And why don't y'all all welcome Brother Randy Hall, Jr. Let's give that to God. To start off, I don't know if Pastor is watching on the live stream, but I want to thank Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Chandler, for giving me this opportunity to preach. And I know many different ones that have a home church pastor that doesn't really let them do much, that just kind of sees them as the person that they were when they originally came in, saw different things that they went through. And just like Jesus was saying, a prophet is without honor in his own country. But pastor, I want to thank you that you never, you never did that with me. Every single time that I've come down, he's always given me honor. He's always given me a time to preach. And he's always seen what God has placed upon my life. And I want to thank you, pastor, for that. Amen. Yes, let's give, him a, let's give him a hand clap of praise for that. That's, I'm really thankful for it. If you'll all stand and turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. And it says, And the same day when the evening, when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in a ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and sea obey him? What I'm going to be speaking to you for a short while on is the one that never slumbers, asleep. And before you are seated, just pray with me. Just lift your hands and pray over this service. God, we come before you right now. And God, I don't want my voice to be normal to them. I don't want them to look at me and see me as I am preaching. But God, when they look to me, I want them to see you. God, I want them to hear your words and not mine. Use me as a vessel. Anoint my lips. And I pray over this congregation that you open their hearts and their minds to you. God, let them be revealed that this trial and this circumstance that they are dealing with is only temporary and it is not going to last forever but it is going to end god you have given them a word that it'll end and let them trust in that word let them receive confirmation of it in jesus name we pray you may be seated let me get this all situated Okay. Jesus said at the very start of this, these verses that I've given you, let us pass over unto the other side. 
He told them already, we're going to make it to the other side. He said, we're, go we're going to go. Let's, I mean, he already given the word. He already said we were going to make it. He didn't say what was going to happen in between. He didn't say it wasn't going to look like you weren't going to make it. He didn't say that it was going to look like you were going to start drowning, like it was going to look like we were all going to die. That's why the disciples came to them and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Master, it looks like we're about to die. It looks like we're about to drown. Look around you. You can see this entire ship is full of water. We are going to sink. We're going to die, and we're going to drown. And Jesus arose and rebuked them and said, that you have no faith. He was like, why did you doubt? Why do you not have any faith? Didn't you hear the words that I spoke to you when I said we were going to make it to the other side? It is in, uh, when God says that he's not a man that he can lie, it is impossible for God to lie because it is impossible for him to speak something and it not come to pass. Because as, <laughs> amen. Because for God to speak is God to do. That is something that I've heard so many times from Brother Wolford at TBC. And I'm really starting to get the revelation of it. It's just like a light bulb, for example. When you're going to switch on the light, regardless of how fast you flip it off, regardless of what you do, that light is already going to come on. Because as soon as you flip it up, the electricity is already flowing through the wires to the light. As soon as God speaks a word to you and he says, you're going to make it through it. You're going to be victorious. You're going to have an awesome future. You're going to have an awesome ministry. I know you're going to go through a dry spell, but you're going to make it through it. As soon as he says that, the electricity is already flowing through. He's already working on it. He's already making it come to pass. He's already doing stuff that is going to put it all together. Amen. Amen. For God to speak is God to do. As soon as he speaks it, when he said, let there be light, it was impossible for light to not come forth. Amen. In Isaiah 55 and 11, it says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. In this scripture, what we can see is God doesn't speak with empty words. His words are not empty, but his words are full of purpose and full of power. Every time he speaks, there is a reason for what he says. Every time he speaks, it is powerful. Amen. God doesn't just speak because he likes hearing what the sound of his voice is. He speaks with purpose and power. If you also look at the context of this chapter, you can see that he refers to his word as rain that is falling and as snow that is falling from the sky. He says it comes down to the earth for the nourishment of the earth so that things can come forth in the earth. When God speaks his word to you, it's impossible for it to come back to him just like it's impossible for rain and snow to fall upwards. It comes down to you because it is for you. And when it comes down to you, it stays with you. It doesn't go back to him. Amen. When we see the rain fall, we don't see the effects of the rain. We don't see the seed that is underground that is beginning to take root. We don't see any of that until we see a stem come forth out of the ground. When God speaks to you, you don't see the outward effects of it because God is working behind the scenes. You don't see what he is doing in this person's life or what he is doing on the outside. If he has promised a financial blessing for you, you don't see the, how he is bringing together the finances. You don't see how he's working on your boss and how he's going to give you that raise. Amen? You don't see it. None of us see it. We don't see the physical effects until... It's already done. Amen. The disciples couldn't understand how Jesus was asleep. They see that he's asleep on the boat, and they're just thinking, why are you asleep? Don't you see? There's waves that are all around. This boat is full. What they couldn't understand was that, yes, God was asleep on the boat. But in the spirit, he was the God that sent the storm. <laughs> the God of the storm was the God in the storm. Amen. 
They didn't understand that when he spoke those words, he already saw the storm. He already knew it wasn't going to overcome them. That's why he said, let us pass to the other side. Amen. I don't know what you're dealing with, but whatever you're dealing with, God already said you're going to make it through to the other side. Amen. Amen. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 2, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Joshua didn't even go into battle yet. Joshua hasn't even drawn his sword yet. Joshua didn't even see the king yet. Joshua didn't even see the city yet. All he saw was a wall. But God said, I've already given it to you. Amen. Yeah, I know you see this wall, Joshua. Yeah, I know things are coming against you right now, Joshua. I know things are in your way right now, Joshua. I know things are stopping you right now, Joshua. But I've already given you the victory. These walls, they're not going to stop you. They're going to fall down. Amen. Whatever is keeping you, whatever is hindering you, whatever is coming against you, it's going to end. Amen. It's going to fall down. It's not going to keep you from your victory. Amen. Amen. Even though God spoke these words to Joshua, he still had to do some things before he could get the victory. He had to do some things that people might even ridicule him over, that the Israelites would probably even say, man, we just look like a bunch of idiots. What are we doing? Walking around a wall, not even speaking? What are we doing? What are they going to think of us? They're going to think we're idiots. They're going to start thinking that the God of Israel is nothing, that all he's going to do is just make them walk around a wall. You're going to have to go through some things. You're going to have people come against you. You're going to have different ones come against you. But God's going to give you the victory in the end. Amen. God didn't tell Joshua what he was going to go through because it didn't matter. He already gave him the victory. Though you might be in a storm... Though you might have different, like it feels like you're in a fire, that you're getting burned left and right. It doesn't matter because he's already given you the victory. Amen. What you're dealing with doesn't matter because it's going to end. It's not going to last forever. Amen. Amen, amen. In Job chapter 13, verse 15, it says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Job went through worse things than any of us could ever imagine. Job had the devil come against his finances, against his family, and ultimately against his health. But even though all those things came against him, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I know I'm going through it. I know I'm dealing with different things right now. I know I'm in a dry spell. I know it feels like he's asleep, like he's not even here with me. But I will trust in him. I will look unto heaven where my help comes from. Amen. He even came to the point where he says the left hand where he does the work. I cannot find him because he hides himself on the right hand. The part where Job was wrong was he wasn't hiding himself. He was there with him. He just couldn't feel him. Just like the disciples were on the boat and Jesus was asleep many times in what we're dealing with and what we're going through. It feels like God is asleep. It feels like we're alone, like nobody can understand us, like nobody is there with us. But I am telling you tonight, God is with you. God is not asleep. You are not alone. The Lord is with you. He is Jehovah Shammah. 
The Lord is there. We can't feel Him. We can't see Him. But He is there. Amen. Give Him a hand clap of praise. God, we thank You for being there. Lord, we thank You for being the one that never slumbers. You were only asleep in the flesh, but You weren't asleep in the Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, God, we thank You, Lord. We thank You, Lord. What Job didn't understand was in the very beginning, God said, have you considered my servant Job? God was with him through the very beginning. We have trials come against us. We have things come against us. When God is testing us, he's not testing us because he thinks we're going to fail. He knows we're going to come through in the end. Amen. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8-9, through 9, it says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. There has been prophets that have spoken to you, that have told you of what is going to happen in your life. They have told you you will be victorious. They have told you that you will make it through in the end. God has spoken to you through his word. He has already revealed himself to you as the one that is going to save you, as the one that is going to be with you. Though he slay you, yet will you trust in him. You have to trust in him. He is there that he is there with you. You can't see the work that he is doing on the outside. But he's there with you. He's making a way for you. Amen. Amen. We're coming to a close. In Matthew chapter 27 verse 32, it says, "And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. God has given you a cross, a burden, something that you're dealing with made specifically for you. In Corinthians, it talks about uh, many people, you know, say, okay, well, God doesn't say in the Bible that God won't let us go through whatever uh, we're not able to, but it might not say that physically, but if you look at it, the principle is there. He says that he will make it to where you'll be able to bear it. Jesus, from the very beginning, it was prophesied that he was going to die for our sins, but he physically could not bear the cross anymore. Physically, he couldn't. He couldn't even lift it. God will not allow you to deal with something that you're not able to. But God will make a way for you where you can be able to bear it. To where you can be able to go through in the end. We can all stand. I don't know what you came here or what what was on your shoulders when you came here, what you came here bearing. But I'm letting you know it's not going to be forever. It's not going to be long that God will come through in the end and will come and save you and will come and be there for you. The only reason why you are going through this is because the trying of your faith works patience. It's just so that you could be able to be complete, so that you could be able to be mature in the end. If we can all just lift up our hands, these altars, they're open. I just pray that you come to the altar, that you just lay down whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through. Whether it be a financial situation, whether you don't know how you're going to pay your next 
bill on your house, your electricity bill, whatever it might be, or whether you're dealing with something in your body, I pray just come to this altar and just lay it at his feet. God's wanting to come through and give someone the victory tonight. God's wanting to come through for you. God, I pray over each and every member of this congregation. Lord, I pray you make a way of escape for them. God, make this cross be to where they can be able to bear it, oh Lord. God, reveal to them that you were there with them. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.
morning.
start messing up frames. Oh. want to remind everybody that's still here remember tomorrow night seven o'clock we have prayer 